Hi, Penny Lane here. I'm so glad you decided to join me, and I promise I'm going to make good use of your valuable time. In this first video, we're going to talk about insights. I'm going to share with you my top five job costing reports. And there's a reason for this, because in the next video, I'm going to teach you all about the item list, the foundation of your job costing system. But in order to understand what your item list is going to look like, we first need to understand what the job cost reports look like. Let's go to QuickBooks now and get started. The first report I'd like to share with you is the job estimates versus actuals detail. From the reports menu, choose jobs time and mileage, job estimates versus actuals detail. Then select the job that you'd like to run the report for. For this example, we're going to use Heather Campbell house new construction. Then click OK. I would say that this is probably the most used and in many ways the most valuable job cost report that QuickBooks has to offer. Before we get into the specifics of the report, I want to point out the structure. Notice this first line that says service. This is the item type. We'll talk more about this in our next video, setting up the item list. The item list is the foundation of your job costing system. And for most people, it represents your cost code list. Things like plans and permits, site work, excavation. Notice that this particular report is in order by first the item type and then by the cost codes. Notice the numbering system. The reason that we have a numbering system to our item slash cost code list is to keep the list in order by phase. It would be weird to see framing way up here and plans and permits way down here. We use the numbering system so that when we're looking at this particular report, we can see what's happening in our jobs in order by phase. First, we're going to do things like plans and permits, site work, excavation, and some of the last things that we do are things like flooring, appliances, and cleanup. Notice also the level of detail that we have here. Under site work, for instance, we've got labor, materials, and subcontract. The item list that comes with QuickBooks for contractors when you first install it does not include this detail. You'll see things like plans and permits and site work and excavation without this additional detail. I like this additional detail. I think it's important because if we're looking at just our site work estimated versus actual cost, we can see that we have an overrun, but we can't see exactly where in the problem lies. Is it the labor, the materials, the subcontract? If we break this down into a little bit more detail, we can see at a glance that our overage is actually in the site work labor. I think this is very important, and that's why I have this same item list available for you to import from my contractor's resource page on my website. Now let's talk a little bit about where these numbers are coming from. The estimated cost comes from entering the estimate into QuickBooks, which for a lot of people, you're calling your job budget. Let's be clear that QuickBooks is really not a great takeoff estimating program, but you do want to enter the estimate into QuickBooks by phase so that you can get this type of breakdown. Let's double click on this number and see where it's coming from. All of the estimated costs are coming from this estimate. Notice that the way this estimate is structured is that we have the estimated cost plus a markup, and this will be our estimated revenue. You may not always have a line by line markup. Sometimes your markup is just on one line by itself, and that's fine too. In that case, your estimated cost and your estimated revenue for each phase or line item will be the same. Now let's take a look at where our actual costs are coming from. If we double click on the actual cost for any particular item, we can see the source of those costs. In this case, the cost is coming from paychecks. If you have your payroll system set up correctly in QuickBooks, you can get the total labor cost, including gross wage, payroll tax, and workers comp, all rolled up into this line item here. The estimated revenue, again, comes directly from the estimate. And the actual revenue is sourced from invoices created from that estimate using progress invoicing or time and materials or cost plus invoicing. 
let's double click there and check it out. Here's the progress invoice that we created from the estimate. We'll go into this in more detail in video three, Transactions in Action. You can also collapse this report. Sometimes it's easier to look at on a line by line basis, and then you can open any particular line item to look at more detail. Additionally, you can customize this report by clicking the Customize Report button, add a percentage difference, and or remove certain columns. For this example, let's remove all of the revenue side. Now we're just looking at the estimated cost versus the actual cost line by line. The estimated revenue can actually be a very valuable piece of this report. Let's customize the report again and add the estimated versus actual revenue back in. And let's expand the report to show all detail. One of the things that's helpful about the estimated versus the actual revenue column is that you can see which line items are already billed out. You can also see things like the fact that we have framing subcontractor costs, but we have no framing subcontractor revenue. This would indicate that we probably need to do some billing for our subcontractor framing. This report provides great insight that can help you manage the job as it's in progress, as well as do a better job of bidding your jobs later by noting things like the overage on your site work labor. It's possible that you could have an issue in the field. Perhaps a change order should have been created. Perhaps you've got some labor issues going on, or maybe you just underbid the site work labor. No matter what the circumstance, that insight is incredibly valuable. The next report I'd like to share with you is called the Job Profitability Detail. From the Reports menu, again, click Jobs Time and Mileage, and then Job Profitability Detail. Again, we can filter it by job, and we're gonna choose the Heather Campbell House new construction job again. This report has only a column for the actual cost and the actual revenue. This report is especially helpful at the end of a job, so you can see your bottom line, line by line, profitability. The next report I'd like to share with you, from the Reports menu, Jobs Time and Mileage, the Job Profitability Summary Report. This is a great overview report of all of your jobs and their profitability. Actual cost versus actual revenue. Bottom line profitability. Sometimes I use this report to help me understand my cash flow for any certain period by filtering the dates. Sometimes you have costs for a job in a certain period, but no revenue. Sometimes you have a lot of revenue for a certain job, but not very many costs. Sometimes this can give you some insight into what's going on with your cash flow during any certain period. The next report I'd like to share with you, the job progress invoices versus estimates. From the reports menu, click jobs time and mileage, job progress invoices versus estimates. This is a great report if you do progress invoicing particularly if you have several jobs going at one time. This report displays the total estimate and the progress invoices that have been created from that estimate, as well as the percentage of progress. This gives you an idea of how much you have left to bill on all of your contracts. I like to filter this report to show only my jobs that still have a balance that needs to be billed out. So once the estimate has been billed out 100%, I'd like to remove it from this report. I can do that by going to the Customize Report button, Filters tab, and from the filter selection, I will choose Estimate Active, Yes, then click OK. In order to remove a job from the report, I need to make the estimate inactive. I can do that by double clicking here and marking the estimate as inactive and saving it. Now my report shows only active estimates that still have a balance to bill out. The next report that I'd like to share with you is the time by job detail. This is a great report if you track time in QuickBooks. Go to the reports menu, click jobs time and mileage, and time by job detail. You can track time in QuickBooks for employees, subcontractors, or even the owner, anyone you like. This particular report shows all of the time tracked during a certain period, by job, item, 
also includes the employee and the billing status. Of course, I can customize this report too. Some of the ideas that you might want to try are customizing the report to filter it and show only a certain customer job. You can also customize the report and filter it to show only a certain employee by name or only a certain service item. There are endless ways that you can customize this report. You can use it to track build or unbuild time. You can use it to report and help you prepare future bids and estimates that might be similar to this job. Give you an idea of how much time went into doing a certain task or doing a certain task on a certain job. Of course, these are only a few of the reports available in QuickBooks, but I hope it's given you an idea of how you can ditch the spreadsheets and get everything you need right out of QuickBooks. I also hope that it's gonna help give you an idea of what your item list needs to look like, because in my next video, I'm gonna teach you how to set up your item list, including the number one mistake that almost everyone makes when setting up their item list in QuickBooks for job costing. See you for video number two.